Hello and welcome back and it's straight into a little bit more work on the potential armature rewind. Now I got some interesting feedback from the last video so I'm going to proceed with this and the donor, the real problem, this armature here um, from Steve's motor bogey from a Hymec I believe, it's absolutely beyond use. I think I showed you last week the windings are damaged. You can just see there. And over the next few videos I'm going to attempt a repair, a rewind. Now I've got a few tools on the bench because we need to get the worms off today and I want to start unwinding the old wire. Now you might hear something in the background. I do indeed have something running on the main railway and we'll take a look at that towards the end of this segment but right now i'm going to make a start now this um, armature is okay now if you want the number the armature is an x410 that fits the Hymec and the bud rail car i believe so i've got a good example and if you can see the meter here i'm just going to attempt to measure the resistance so let's have a look there i've gone across it's about well that says 7.9 ohm so i'm going to turn it round one more and we're going to measure all three i hope you can more or less see what i'm doing yep that's 7.9 as well and then the final segment it's a little bit difficult to get my probes on um, but 7.9 as well so that's a resistance a sort of benchmark resistance now I'm going to put this armature out the way safe because we know that's good and let's have a look at Steve's damaged one okay now you see that I've used a sharpie to put a few marks on for reference because I'm going to try and take notes as I unwind it okay what have we got there well, we've got a reading of 11.7 on that one. Ooh, 1.5. Sorry, I haven't got that right. My mistake. Right, that's open circuit. Hadn't quite got the armature in the right position there. And then we'll just do the last one. Yeah, and that's open circuit too. Just testing I've got my probes right. You'll see I've got quite a nice set of uh, sharp probes for this job. Works quite well, but I recommend that you put the little covers on when you're not using them because it's quite easy to damage those sharp ends. Okay, so uh, I think I need to get these worms off first. So I've... Um, I've got a worm puller here and we're going to try and crack them off first so I'm not worried really too much which I'll probably use the thickest end first just to push against the shaft. Um, very handy tools these worm pullers so I'm going to insert the that part the mandrel there and then You'll have to forgive me if I'm fumbling a bit because I'm trying to maintain this in shot as well. So I'm now going to fit this. Um, now I'm well aware that the mandrel I'm using won't go through the worm, but it'll be enough to get it started. So I'm just going to take the tension up. How can I hold this? Hopefully. You can see, and yeah, we should have movement. So I'm gently just using the tool. I'm going to push, oops, I'm just going to push this until I'm more or less level with the worm. Okay, that's all right. Now what I need to do is be a bit more accurate. I need to just get this. out that one and I think I should tighten this into the tool really but it's it's not necessary for this demonstration 
Okay, so what I've got to do now is just try and line everything up carefully. Okay. I'm hoping that's going to be good enough. I'm going to try and hold it like this just to show you how easy really it is to get these worms off without damaging them and I can really feel that that's now there come off let's just pop that down so there's one of the worms off um, I'll take the other one off later there's no need for me to do that now I'll just put it safe over there but you can see that we've exposed the commutator end of this now so the next job really is to unsolder the windings now I'm going to try and do this uh, on the camera I don't know how well it's going to work but come back once I've I'll just move the multimeter out of the way warmed up this soldering iron I've got a soldering iron and a solder sucker and we're going to attempt to cleanly remove the solder where the windings are soldered on. Now you'll see that section has got one dob of Sharpie on it, that section of commutator has got two, and then the blank one is number three. So I'm going to make a note uh, on my scrappy piece of paper of just um, where the wires go in relation to the coils just so I wind it carefully. Let's get this soldering iron warmed up and see if you can see the solder come off. Okay well that is warming up but it's a great chance now for me to just show you this thing uh, which looks a bit like a pitchfork but uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description box to a really interesting video I found on YouTube about um, a homemade armature winder. Um, the creator very kindly left links to all of the files to make the machine and um, very helpful. And it's great when people just share their ideas. So I'm sharing their video with you and I hope you enjoy having a look. I'm aiming to try and make this machine. I might not make it fully Arduino controlled. I might make it a hand crank version. I don't know, but here's the first part and that's printed in black PLA. Just needs tidying up underneath where it sat on the print bed. You might see that I've just um, edited in a few seconds of film of the item being printed. It's a long time since I've had my 3D printer on. So I was quite pleased that it, it seemed to go quite well. I had to just level the bed. I think I'd stored things on it. The PLA, I put in the airing cupboard, the boiler room, just for a little while to make sure there was no moisture in it. And it's printing out nicely. And if you can perhaps see, it's quite a small object, but the definition is good and I'm happy with the print quality and it is hollow. And I don't know whether I can find a piece of wire to show you. I'm just reaching over, but uh, if I poke this in, you might see that the wire goes in. Now look, perhaps you can get an idea of the principle of the machine already. If you haven't looked at the video, you can see that if this part rotates, we're creating a winding area at the end. And of course the wire can feed through. So I'm quite excited to have a go with this machine. And uh, yeah, let's hope it will help with this job. But right now I'm going to somehow try and unsolder these wires. What I might do is just try and get a little bit more let me see if I can just zoom the camera in a fraction I might have to cut away and do this off camera but the idea is I shall warm up the blob of solder 
and then using the solder sucker position that and hopefully suck the solder away to leave the wires free but uh, saying and doing is always a different job so I'm going to attempt this on camera first but if I'm worried about damaging the armature uh, I might I do really need to hold it okay I'm just going to cut away and go and get a tool to hold on to this armature okay well let's see if I can do any better now the uh, it's actually quite handy that that worm's still on the end because it gives quite a good grip so I'm just going to get ready to see whether I can remove this solder. Right, well it did heat up but unfortunately I wasn't able to hold it still enough. So I am going to do this job off camera. And then we'll have a look at the freed off wires in a minute. Okay, well, I'm going to try and show you how I've got on. Now, if I rotate it, you can see longer strands. So this strand that's sticking out here. Um, the next one. Just don't know whether I can get it. It's, there we go. These are the outer ends of the coils, so where the coils finish. And then right near, there's one there, just on the left of the picture, just there. I know my finger looks huge. There's the tip. And then the other one is just there. And the third one just there. Now they're the inner ends of the coils. Now I didn't know whether I'd be able to free those off, but I have. So I can now see, just looking, if we start at section one. So the inner end of pole one, which is marked there, is soldered to the commutator section one, and then the outer end of that coil is on section two. So then the inner end of pole two starts at section two and ends on section three. And then the inner end of this pole, pole three, starts on section three and ends back on commutator piece one. So I've got the wiring diagram and it's all come out. Now I do want to try and preserve this little fiber disc. I know it looks a bit of a pain because the wires are threaded through it, but I'm gonna keep that on there. So I guess the next job is to unwind. So what I want to do is really try and count the turns as I unwind this. And um, I might try and wrap the wire around a former because the other measurement I might do eventually is try and just get a rough idea of the length of wire on each pole piece. So if I just look at the end, let's just try and look at, that one has got lots of breaks. So we know that number one is in quite a state. So we'll perhaps not unwind that one first. Number two's got quite a lot of abrasion. Number three, Maybe number three is not so bad. So maybe number three is going to be the one that I attempt to unwind first. Now, as you can see, I've already undone one turn. This is incredibly fiddly. So I'm not going to really try and do too much more. You see, that's stuck. I think there's varnish as well. I'm not gonna to do too much more on the camera because I don't want to break these wires and then find the ends unobtainable. So I'm going to try and be careful. So I am going to get this unwound. So I'll be back when I've got the results of the unwinding. Okay, well, since the last segment, I've been trying to 
remove this wire from the armature and look at that what a mess I've managed to do two segments you can see that they're clean now but the problem is the varnish that has gone down around the commutator into the windings has just fixed them so firmly they won't just unwind nicely the wire keeps breaking no matter how carefully I try well I've persevered and ignore that mess of wire down there on this former I think I've probably got nearly exactly one whole length of wire now it doesn't look much but let me tell you it's quite long so my aim is to um, in the warmth of the house is I'm going to try and stretch this out and take a length measurement now I did try and count turns got a bit tricky I must say where are we um, I wrote it down I think look at that 267 if that's right I might have lost count I might have added a few on I don't know really difficult when you are trying to unwind this varnished wire but it wouldn't surprise me if that's about right but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out and take a reading about just um, how long it is and then I might go by length and I might wind one section on the armature and see what sort of resistance we're at I've got to measure the thickness of this wire uh, it's all quite exciting and as you can see it's all um, interesting mess wise but we'll get there I'm not going to give up on this um, I think the proximity of the commutator to the windings with the varnish is a real issue but uh, I might ease that along a bit just to give me a bit more room we'll see I don't really want to make it slip but there look you can just see the remnants of the insulation that they use but it's not very good so onward and upward we're going to get going with this i'm going to keep uh, persevering i'll get the last lot of wire off i've got a resistance reading off a good armature so i know what i'm aiming for and i know the layout i know where the coils start and where they finish so there's not too many issues apart from accurately winding it and not getting a short circuit. But I'll be back next week and uh, we'll take a look at what developments I've made. Hopefully I'll get some time on this project. I need to think about insulating this and cleaning everything up and finding some wire. Now I've got some wire, just need to take some measurements. So it could be that I'll hand wind one of the formers and just see how it looks how it behaves resistance wise and see whether it looks tidy i'll tell you what this wire is on tight the the machine that wound this put the winds on with quite a bit of tension there's no slack in there so it's going to be really important to try and get these tight okay i'm going to show you what's on the layout now and give you a minute or two of running so until the next video i'll say goodbye <laughs>